Okay, we have to first understand what defines youth. I think that may be an obvious question, but oftentimes if we don't start to look at a patient's old photographs, we may be far off the bat. So let's do a comparison here of Sharon Sun in her 20s and her 40s. What is the difference? If we look at the upper eyelid brow complex and you look at the, where the brow position sits, it's relatively in the same height. The upper eyelid position is relatively the same height. The mid face is relatively the same height and same with the chin, but what's gone on is incredible degree of deflation. You can actually see the bony structures falling there and you can see all the concavities. So in her case, volume is really the key. And oftentimes women look at themselves in their mid 20s and find themselves to be too round. So we're not necessarily trying to achieve that. The, if you look here, um, the brows are obviously, this is an exaggerated brow lift, but it's not exactly what we're trying to achieve. And if you look at her in youth, it was lower and fuller, and that's what we're trying to achieve. We use the, use the vocabulary of wrinkles, gravities, and uh, folds, but really where the key is, is volume. So I want to talk about what I would like to look at is the evolution of shape from youth until aging, thinking about geometry. When we're a child, we're a circle, a lot of baby fat, very round face. As we proceed into the teenage years, we're a circle, and we're still a circle in the early 20s, very round, fat face. When we get into the mid-20s, we're starting to have that heart-shaped face, as you saw some of what Dr. Sancho pre uh, presented, but it, we still have a particularly round face. In our late 20s, we have a triangle with a little roundness peeking through. Because a lot of times when you look at a person, you make a judgment about their age and their looks 20 feet away before you can even see their wrinkles or their gravity. And that's due to facial shape. A lot of women like the, their face the most in their early 30s when they're, when they're just getting a little bit more sculpted. And that's that hard shaped face or triangle. When we get into the late 30s, early 40s, we start to lose volume around the eyes, start to flatten in that area, and maybe we gain a little bit of weight after some childbirth if we're women. And then as we continue, there's oftentimes more weight gain in the lower face, and you start to see the inversion of the triangle coming through. When you get into the late 60s and beyond, oftentimes we get really, really hollow around the eyes, and the, and the face begins to dominate lower down, so there's an inversion of the triangle. So the goal is not to necessarily make a circle, but to recreate the triangle and flip the triangle back. So the focus is on, on facial shape, changing volume and shape. And think of those ideas and it'll give you a better way to look at, the, look at the face. And when you particularly think of periorbital rejuvenation, in my opinion, the real key is volume. So patient re-education, the other thing is oftentimes the reason folds are bothering someone that when they walk in, because that's the only vocabulary they have, and they oftentimes tend to be extremely close to a mirror. So it's this little flaw, it's that little wrinkle, it's that little thing. And you know, almost every woman I talk to is bothered by some wrinkles around their mouth, whether they're 30 or they're 60. But what you need to do is show them your results and have them educated from about three to five feet away, which is how we interact with each other socially, which is what we're trying to emphasize is the facial shape. So how do we do this. Let's talk about some of the fundamentals of procedure. It's, I don't use a lot of tumescence because I use sedation, but I think tumescence is a wonderful technique. The thighs and abdomen are the easiest to harvest for me because you don't have to reposition the patient. Uh, hand harvesting, everything is done with a 10cc syringe and these great little Johnny locks that... that uh, let's look at some results and understand what we're looking at, which is the idea that the eye, instead of losing the frame through traditional reductive surgery, we're reframing it. And here's a 48-year-old lady. I did a little plasma skin resurfacing. I took a little bit of skin off the upper eyelid, a couple millimeters, no fat, no postseptal work, and everything else you're seeing is fat grafting. There is no facelift, there is no brow lift, there is, there is no bag removal. It's just adding volume back around the eyes. And that, to me, is a softer, feminine look. This is a 75-year-old lady with a facelift and adding volume back into the brows, eyes, and cheeks. And the facelift is to manage the neck and jawline a little bit better. Inverting triangles, the idea, you heard that before, is to bring back the attention to the eyes away from the jawline. This is a 46-year-old Chinese woman, and you can actually see, this is a lady that did not, she had a little bit of skin removed from the upper eyelid, but that's it. The rest is volume. She's a little undercorrected under the, under the lower eyelids, but she's happy with it. There was no facelift. This is just resculpting a wider face by narrowing it. This is the level of artistry that you can start applying when you start working. This is a lady that's status post brow lift, an eyelid, and a facelift on the left, and she's too gaunt. So this is actually the opposite of widening that face out to create a more of an attractive look to her. A little bit of silicone into the lips. 
This is my own mother, 68 years old. This is a transconj bleph, as well as volume around the eyes, cheeks, and jawline to create a softer look. 56-year-old status post brow lift and eyelid surgery and facelift on the left. This is just adding a little bit of volume back around the eyes, cheeks, and jawline. Using old photographs so that you have a blueprint of design so people don't look different. 39-year-old status post brow lift and eyelid surgery on the left and counterintuitively it looks like she doesn't need anything else on that upper eyelid. It looks like she needs another brow lift but you need volume and when you create that volume you can actually see that that supertarsal crease is in a position that's much closer to where it was at 28. This is a 49 year old. Looks like she's actually, this is an interesting photo. I've done actually the photo about four ago in this one. They were on Accutane. I did the whole procedure about six weeks after Accutane, but there's no incisions, no cutting, so the risk of scarring is really not. This is a 59 year old with a bad chin implant that I removed, some peel under the eyes, silicone lip enhancement, a little bit of skin removed from the upper eyelid, and the rest is volumetric addition to the face, and you can see her closer to where she was at 35. Restoring identity, people that have been overlifted or pulled, this is taking the cheek implants out and then resculpting around the brows and eyelids to take away the brow lift and eye lift look. This is, uh, I apologize for having more makeup on the after, this is the way she came in, but you can see that this is a brow lift and eyelid surgery on the left and then correcting it with volume. The idea is that fat must last three months and it goes away. No, it actually gets better over time. It was a blended look, like hair restoration, that graft starts to grow at six months. Well, you gotta w give it time. This is a 55-year-old lady that's eight months after fat transfer, and this is two years out, only one treatment with a little silicone lip enhancement. That's two years out, and she, on a, on a testimonial on my website, talks about looking better at two years than she did at a year. Even look at how low that brow is. That's putting fat in and pulling the brow lower. This is uh, six weeks after a fat graft, and actually look at her nose. I did a little cor correction of inverted V deformity with that. This is six months out. This is 14 months out. I did a little neck lift as well. And you can see that upper eyelid counterintuitively. You think you need to add, you need, need to lift it. You need to actually make it lower. Because you look at her photo at 35. It's a very low full brow. And just quickly, some non-surgical alternatives that are out there. When I do Restylane, I don't fill nasolabial folds in about only about 5% do I fill, and I did not in this case. This is volume. This is recreating volume using Restylane and Perlane. This is a lady on the left, 38 years old, who's one week post nasolabial folds and lips by another physician, and this is a week after my Restylane Perlane with four syringes, two, one under each eye of Restylane, uh, half a cc of Perlane into each cheek, and then half a cc of Perlane in each pre-jowl sulcus. 48-year-old lady, you can actually see that her nasolabial fold is deepened by adding volume into the cheek, but who cares? She looks better. This is the same four syringe treatment using actually cannulas. This is a book that I wrote with the glass holes came out last year, and I appreciate your attention.